Hi, it's Sora here from The Wizard's Code. Earlier I showed you this complete tropical environment that I'd built. And in a previous video, I also showed you how to create the textures and the height map for this island. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to create the trees. And in subsequent videos, we'll look at the other types of vegetation too. So let's get going. Okay, so now we're going to get on with planting some trees. We're going to start off at the top here where we have this forest floor texture. This is going to be the main part of my tropical forest area. So what we need to do is create a new Gaia spawner. We'll call this one the Tropical Island Forest. Let's add that into the scene by highlighting it and clicking the Add to Scene button. And we'll add it into the biome as well. That'll make it easy for us to spawn the entire biome later, though it's strictly speaking not necessary. Now let's go ahead and start adding our trees into the spawner. First add a spawn rule and click to visualize it. As with texture spawners from the previous video, there are no masks by default and so the spawn will go everywhere at first. I want the whole of this spawner to be applied mostly where I have the forest ground textures. So I can add a texture mask to the spawner as a whole and filter for the forest ground texture. As you can see in the scene view, the visualizer now shows us that it's only going to appear where we have forest ground. Excellent. Now let's configure the spawn rule to be a terrain tree rule. And since this is going to be our first large tree, we'll name it appropriately. Let's start with the really large trees from the tropical forest pack. They're called Kapok trees. Drag the prefab into the spawn rule and hit spawn so that we can see what happens. And there we go. As quick as that, we have a whole load of trees probably too many and a few of them are appearing in spots that are not ideal. Let's go inside the forest here. Yep, okay, that's not looking too bad. It's nice and dense. There's lots of darkness in there. Let's take a look on the canopy. Yep, we've got some gaps between the trees that'll allow the light in and allow for variation in the vegetation and the light shafts and so on going in there. But I think we probably want to open it up a bit. To do that, we'll increase the minimum fitness, which means that we'll only get trees spawning really good, strong spots for them. That will reduce some of those appearing on the ridges like we saw earlier, and it will probably reduce some of those spawning in the center areas too. Let's spawn local and take a look at the effect. Okay, that's looking good around the edges of the trees. But as we come inside here, we see that there's lots of tight clumps of trees. And that's just not how forests work. Also, on the outside here, this tree here, for example, it's on a slope. And we don't want that. So let's visualize what's going on here and add on a slope mask. And slope masks, by default, say, do grow on the steeper slopes. And we want to actually reverse that and only have it growing on the flat areas. So we'll click the Invert button. And there we go. We are now only growing on the flattest areas of the forest. And if we zoom back into that tree, we see that it's unlikely to spawn here now. We'll just make sure by just changing the slope angles a little bit and making them be even more shallow. And then we'll click spawn local and take a look. Now let's fly up a bit and have a look around the edges. I don't see any trees now that are growing on ground where they would struggle to get a hold with their massive roots. So that's looking good. Okay, so we'll come back to how the trees are clumped together later on. First, I want to put in some younger and smaller trees amongst these giants. So let's create a new spawn rule and we'll put in these Jatoba trees. We'll drop the prefab into the rule and visualize it. I want this tree to appear all over the same area as these large trees, but because they're smaller, I want them to be able to be growing on the slopes as well as inside of the main clumps. So that means I don't need the slope mask on this rule. Okay, so I've spawned that and it looks pretty good. We've got some trees appearing on the outside here, and if we go inside, we should see that there's a few of them being able to grab a little light. Hmm... That's not really what I want though on the inside. It's not quite working. I'm going to need to spread out those big ones as I thought I would earlier on. I also don't want these trees growing too close to the big ones. They wouldn't get enough light there. You can see what I mean here. This little tree would be in constant shadow and just wouldn't grow. 
So what we'll do here is we'll add a collision mask onto the smaller trees. Let's visualize where these trees can grow. And now let's add the Kapok trees to the collision mask on the Jatoba trees. As you can see on the visualization, this means we're not going to get these smaller trees right next to the big trees. But it will be able to spawn over here where there's plenty of light. Let's spawn local and see if that works. Okay, we've got a tree there in the opening. That's great. That's exactly what we want. Let's go and have a look in a denser part of the forest. And okay, let's see. Yeah, that's looking good. We've got trees away from the big trees, but not any right next to them. However, it's not quite right. There's not enough light in here and not enough of these smaller trees. So I think we're going to need to thin this out. Let's go over into the spawner here and let's increase the distance that we use to check for places where we can spawn kapok trees. What that does is it results in fewer checks and therefore fewer spawn locations. And now we see we've got plenty of space between the trees. And if we zoom in, we should see a lot more of these smaller trees, which we do. Excellent. That's looking pretty good now. All right, now it's time for some other trees. Let's create a new rule, change the visualization color to something distinct from the others. Purple will do, I think, and visualize the spawner. Now, these are gonna be able to spawn much further down onto the slopes, but we'll worry about that later, I think. Let's start with getting them inside and around the edges of the forest area. We'll use this Kapuaku tree. To get started, we can copy the collision mask from the Jatoba trees and apply it here too. Since these are smaller, we can afford to have more of them spawning, and so we'll decrease the location increment to between 10 and 20. We'll also reduce the minimum fitness to allow these to grow in places that Jatoba trees just can't grow. Now, let's spawn this and see what we get. Excellent! As you can see, we have a really good scattering of trees around the outside of the forest now. The bigger trees can't grow here because the slope's a challenge for them, but these smaller trees, they can spout up quite well. Let's take a look inside. Ah, not quite so good in here, there's just too many of them, and they're growing right under the Jatoba trees. Let's add the Jatoba tree to the collision mask. Spawn again. All right, that's looking a lot better now. Right, now that we see this coming together, I think we can increase the number of large trees just a touch. To do this, we'll drop the maximum location increment down to somewhere between 45 and 55. Let's spawn and see how that looks. Oh, that's looking a lot better now. There are too many of these Kapuaka trees in here, but that's okay. We're going to break up that repetition by adding some more trees in there. Let's duplicate this rule for the Kapuaka trees. This one's going to have the same settings, but a different tree prefab, because there's two of them in this set. Let's try hitting spawn here. Okay, yep. Yeah, that's looking good. We have a bit more variety in those clearings now. But let's add a little more by duplicating those spawn rules and adding in these dwarf palmetto palms. I'm fast forwarding here because it's exactly the same as we just did with the other trees. Okay, that's looking really good. When we take a proper look around now, we can see that we're really starting to see plenty of variety and layers in our forest here. But I do think we can afford to have a few more of these big trees. Okay, on very fast speed here, you see that I'm adding some more uh, tweaks to how things are spawning in. You can download the actual spawners that I'm using for this scene in the link below. They're on GitHub. You can use them as long as you have the Tropical Forest Pack, or even without it, you can see how I've set things up. But right now, I'm really happy with the way this looks. That's enough for this week, and we'll do some more of the vegetation very soon. Hit that like button and the notification bell, you'll know when it's published.